Hi everyone, I'm Danielle. I am the community manager here at Calibrate. Um, I'm excited for tonight's event. Just gonna wait another minute or so, make sure everyone gets on before we officially kick everything off. So thank you guys for joining tonight. I see, I see people coming in. <laughs> so just gonna wait a little bit more till we have some more people. Okay, I think we can get started now. So to kick things off, I am, as I mentioned, I'm the community manager. I am joined tonight by uh, one of our experts on our member council, um, Dr. Christine Celio. I will let her introduce herself to you all in a little bit, but I first wanted to just share a few um, housekeeping things before we officially, officially get started. So first note is that this event is being recorded. So don't worry if you miss something, you wanna refer to it later, you have to leave early, you came late. We're going to be sending out a recap on our blog with this recording and by the end of this week. So look out for that in our, your inbox as well as on our blog. And the second piece is that we will be leaving about 10 minutes at the end of this event for a live Q&A. So you will see in the Zoom that there's two options, the Q&A button as well as the chat button. So feel free to use that Q&A um, feature for any questions you have about the presentation tonight um, for Dr. Celio and myself. If you have other questions or anything else that's going on that you need help with, feel free to use the chat feature for that. Fiona, a member of my team, will be monitoring that chat for you guys and she'll be able to help, help figure out anything you guys may need throughout the evening. And then I will uh, circle back to the Q&A at the end. So to get started, going to share a quick agenda about what we are going to talk through tonight. So first off, I'm going to share a little bit about what Calibrate is and our introduction to our four pillars of metabolic health. And that is because I know we have some people on this call who may not be as familiar with Calibrate, but we also do have some of our amazing members on here too. Um, but just gonna give a quick overview. Then I have uh, three polls that I'm gonna launch in the Zoom uh, feature. So I will put the question up on the screen and then I will launch the poll and you guys can anonym, anonymously participate. And I'll wait until about majority of people have replied and then we'll move to the next section. Then I'll pass it over to Dr. Celio. She'll introduce herself, what she does at Calibrate, explain a little bit more about the emotional health pillar at Calibrate. And then she'll get into all of her tips for this holiday season. And then we'll wrap it up with our live Q&A. And if we don't get to your question tonight, don't worry, we will um, add all the questions we didn't get to to the blog recap as well. So you'll be able to see our answers um, after tonight. Okay, so to get started, what is Calibrate? Calibrate is the first metabolic health company changing the way the world treats weight through our virtual one year program that combines doctor prescribed GLP-1 medication with intensive lifestyle intervention through an app-based curriculum and one-on-one -on -one video coaching for improved metabolic health markers and long-term sustained weight loss. So at Calibrate, we have four pillars of metabolic health, food, sleep, exercise, and emotional health. These pillars are things that you will go through with throughout the app in the app curriculum, and you will learn how to make tiny tweaks in each one of these pillars. Tonight, we're really going to focus on the emotional health pillar, uh, and that's why we have Dr. Celio here. So um, before I pass it over to her, I wanted to share a poll. So this is the first poll. Is the holiday season often a time of high stress or anxiety for you? I'm sure this is probably the reason why many of us are here tonight, but I'm going to launch the poll. Feel free to participate. Um, yeah, you should see it pop up any second. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna give you guys a second until we have a majority of people who have answered. 
Okay. Awesome. Not super, not surprising. 74% said yes. Okay. Cool. Now I'm going to go to the next question, which is what metabolic health pillar are you most confident about during this season? So this will be uh, the four pillars I mentioned before, food, sleep, exercise, and emotional health. And you should see that one popping up now. Interesting, looks like sleep is, is taking the lead here, about 45%. And, and uh, exercise and emotional health are, are right behind. Very interesting. Okay, we'll close that poll. Okay, and last um, is what metabolic health pillar are you most worried about this season? And it'll be the same four pillars. So I'm gonna launch that now, either food, sleep, exercise, or emotional health. And I'm, I'm actually, you know, I know you guys can only select one answer, but I'm sure there are multiples um, as well. Ooh. Okay, strong, strong leader here is food with 64%. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, cool. Well, thank you guys all for participating. I appreciate it. Just good to get a feel for how everyone's feeling tonight. Um, so thank you. So next, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Celio to introduce herself. Um, before she does that, just wanted to give you guys a little background on what is on this slide here. So uh, this is called our Metabolic Health Lightning Round. This is just for you guys to, to reference and get to know Dr. Celio. She'll also explain a lot more about her background, um, but this is uh, her favorites in each one of our four pillars. And it's something we love to ask our different members of our team and all of our experts when they are sharing a little bit more about who they are. So I'll pass it over to you now, Dr. Celia. Thank you so much. Um, so as Danielle said, my name is Dr. Christine Celio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in motivation and behavioral change. I'm Calibrate's emotional health expert, which means that I create all the content for the emotional health parts of the program based on my experience in the mental health field for the past, the better part of the past two decades. So my work is both on how to motivate ourselves to initiate and make the best decisions for ourselves. And what I think is the hardest part of behavior change, which is sustaining the benefits. So emotional health is one of the four pillars of metabolic health and a key part of the Calibrate curriculum. And one thing that's kind of funny is that sometimes we think that the mind and the body uh, are two separate entities, like that somehow our neck doesn't connect the two of them or something. And what is important to remember is that the way we feel emotionally impacts how we think and what we do. So emotional health is core to not only how you treat your body now in terms of creating the change you need to get healthier, but also how to prepare yourself for what the program call, what programs call the maintenance phase, which turns out is the rest of your life. Kind of a big deal, right? So Calibrate approaches metabolic health as not just a diet, it's a fundamental change in approach to both health and emotional well-being. It's about weight loss, but more than that, it's about living a big, full, healthy life where people love their strong bodies and are excited about their future. Um, I think that the emotional shifts that we're teaching and continuing to encourage have the ability to impact all parts of your life. So Today, I was invited to talk about tips to manage your emotional health in this stressful holiday season. And I'll admit, actually, even yesterday when I was meeting with Danielle and the rest of the team, uh, I had a bunch of different tips for you um, about how to manage stress over the holiday. They involved having events not focused on food, going on walks, self-care, kind of all the regular stuff that you would find in a women's magazine around this time of year that you've read in the waiting room at some point. 
But then this morning I woke up and it was cold and it was dark and I was stressed about the day and this talk and, you know, what was going on in my life, my plans for the weekend, all that kind of stuff. And I thought about what I was going to do to manage my own stress and what I would tell my own patients. I saw patients this morning, patients in psychotherapy. Um, So I actually rewrote the tips. So the first tip that I give people in terms of managing their holiday stress or really stress any time of year is to slow down. So you probably heard the platitude of the phrase that life is short, but wide, this too will pass. So originally when I heard this, I thought it was about the difficult times, right? Like this will pass, no big deal. Everything's hard sometimes, but life moves on, time moves on. Um, But it's not about that. It's about all times, right? The bad, the good, the neutral, it all passes. And we have an opportunity to figure out what to do with it. The holidays are a time when things feel like they're on fast forward. In fact, I was emailing with the chief medical officer of Calibrate, Kim Boyd, this morning, and it was all about like, I can't believe it's mid-December already. I swear it was just September. Things are going so fast. There's so many things demanding our attention and time just feels like it's flying. Um, In fact, some of the things that we slow down for, sometimes the only things we slow down for are problems we wanna solve. So in this season, this holiday season, I wanna suggest that you slow down, not just for managing or cleaning up the bad or the difficult, but for savoring the moment. So there's a psychological concept called savoring. And what that is, it's attending, appreciating, and enhancing positive experiences in moments of your life. You know, when we're feeling overwhelmed, we try to check out. Oftentimes we eat our feelings, we try to kind of numb ourselves. We binge watch TV, we check social media, uh, we scroll. And what I want you guys to try is that when you're feeling overwhelmed, instead of checking out, I want you to slow things down and check in. So here's how you could do this when you're feeling really in your head, overwhelmed, overstressed. So I call this exercise the six senses. So I want you to find a moment in your day um, and try to remember it like you would Think about writing out a descriptive passage in a novel. So what are you seeing around you? What details can you pull out? How's the physical environment? Is it cold? Is it wintry? Is it humid? What are you smelling around you? What are you tasting? Remnants of lunch, your coffee, maybe what's in the air. What do you hear? Can you pick out two or three things that you're hearing right now? And how do you feel emotionally? So this can be any particular moment. This morning, I was waiting for the light to change to cross the street as I was walking. And I did this exercise. I was so in my head about whether or not we had the groceries that we needed to make dinner, um, what my plans were for tomorrow, that I wasn't noticing anything around me. I had my AirPods in. I was just like getting from A to B and kind of floating, like not even noticing when I got to where I was. And being able to be in that moment, kind of taking out my headphones and checking in with where I was and really savor that moment allowed me to pay attention and lifted me out of just being in my head in those ruminations and being back into the present moment, which actually allowed me to feel a lot less stressed and overwhelmed because not everything was kind of pouring down on me at the same time. So when you check in with yourself and you slow things down, you can make decisions about what you wanna do next, hopefully in a values consistent way, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later. It's a big core part of the emotional content, uh, emotional health content and Calibrate. So another way to slow down is to literally slow down your speech. So when we're feeling overwhelmed or stressed, we tend to talk more quickly. We, when we do this, we breathe more shallowly, which can start to activate our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight system. So while we're trying to go fast and get things done, maybe we try, we're trying to be more efficient, kind of go, go, go. Um, maybe we're trying to do that to reduce our stress. We're actually stressing out our bodies. So if you notice yourself talking at a quick pace, which many of us do, I do it all the time, try to slow it down. Notice how it feels to speak at a more measured pace. You're likely to feel less rushed, less frenetic, Even better, try to take a deep breath in, hold your breath and extend out, extend the breath out. 
so there's a, a breathing technique uh, that I think is really important for people to try, especially when they're feeling really stressed and overwhelmed, and it's called the five, seven, eight. So it's breathing in for five counts, holding for seven counts, and breathing out for eight counts. And try to do that five or six times. The reason why that's important is it's actually not taking the deep breath that is the most important part. It's the slow release. And this is funny because I remember growing up and I was like, okay, take a deep breath. Actually, that doesn't help so much because you hold it. It's the letting go. That's the important part. Because think about even breathing in, right? Like your shoulders go up. It's the breathing out that really helps. So slowing down, taking a deep breath in, holding for a bit, and then letting it all go can help relax your body, put you into that uh, parasympathetic nervous system or activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is called your feed or breathe, um, sort of the thing that helps you relax and create an opportunity for you to reduce your stress. So the second tip is what I call happiness is a new pair of glasses. And really this is about reframing. So I find that during times of high stress, it's really easy to complain and vent too much work, too little support, being bored, being overstimulated, people letting you down, being disappointed in yourself. So there's this concept in therapy called positive negative pairing. It's when you notice something you don't like, which you normally would complain about and then pair it with something potentially positive. So a different way of seeing it. So the example um, that I give is that actually just last week, I had to go on a trip that I really, really did not want to go on. I complained to everyone about it, like everyone. I'm sure actually some of the people on this call, if you know me, I complained about this trip. And I'd like to think that I'm overventing um, or I'm above it because I'm a psychologist, but I am not. Um, turns out though, and this is, research has actually uh, found this, venting rarely makes you feel better after those initial expressions of disappointment. And it actually only creates more opportunity to wallow in negativity and it makes you feel worse. And then if somebody else is venting with you, it just kind of creates like an initial bond, but it actually ends up making everyone feel bad. So in that situation where I had to go on this trip, I didn't want to go on, I had this choice to be grouchy or just, you know, kind of decide to put on a new pair of glasses, see things from a different perspective. So the irritation of it, about the trip became appreciation that I was able to travel again after nearly two years of canceling everything. The sadness of being away from my family turned into an opportunity for some alone time that I sorely needed to do some reading and some self-care. So the question I want you to think about this season when you are frustrated and overwhelmed or irritated about something what would you have wished for in the past that you're complaining about right now? A trip to the grocery store when last year we weren't allowed to go to the grocery store in person. Being asked to do something at work that you didn't know how to do a few years ago. Running for 10 minutes when last year you couldn't even walk for five. How can you reframe things? How can you let go of those negative thoughts that might be weighing you down? How can you clean your own glasses? Where is there space for appreciation? Can you change your thought patterns around so it's not, I, so it, it turns into less, I don't have to do this, I get to do this. So really putting that frame of this is an opportunity, not something I have to do. I, I just want to jump in really quick and say that that reminds me of a value here, here at Calibrate, which is small wins, great big wins. And I feel like I just wanted to mention like, going along with what Dr. Celio said is that reframing it into a small win and realizing that all those small wins add up to a big win is uh, something really important to keep in mind, I think. Absolutely, Danielle. Thank you for adding that in. My last uh, tip is to give yourself some grace. So there's this really brilliant psychologist, her name is uh, Kristen Neff, and she writes about something called mindful self-compassion. And one of the main points she makes is treating yourself like you would treat a friend. So sometimes we disappoint ourselves. Sometimes we don't get everything right. Everyone's like that. Um, and sometimes we berate ourselves, right? Like sometimes we say unkind things to ourselves. But the thing is that those words that we say to ourselves, those criticisms, they rarely result in sustainable behavior change. Shaming yourself doesn't actually reduce the amount of stress or anxiety or disappointment. It often highlights it. 
So if you've ever been on a diet, you've been there, right? Self-shaming is a real thing. Where in the season can you give yourself that kindness that you give other people? Treating yourself like you would treat somebody else. Have you ever talk to somebody else the way that you talk to yourself? Where can you carve out space for yourself? So this doesn't mean permission to give up or irresponsible behavior. Um, it's more of a call to action, encouragement. And this brings me to a concept I talk a lot about in calibrating our emotional health content around living cons consistently with your values, which I talked about a little bit before. So giving yourself grace is considering your future self. What would you be proud of doing? I doubt it's beating yourself up. I doubt you would think future version of me, I'm really glad I said that I was this, that, or the other thing. What you would be proud of probably is treating yourself better, eating well, being kind, exercising, living the way that you want to be living. So one of the end of year things that I'm recommending everyone to do, or at least all of the patients I see in psychotherapy, actually even some of my friends, is do kind of an end of the year review for yourself, a 360, um, if you want to think about it that way. And think about what you want to do more of next year, less of, and stay the same. These are often places where you can see your values show up, and it gives you a sense of how you can move towards a values consistent life. So certainly managing stress isn't just for the holidays, um, but I hope that these tips will help you in the next few weeks and beyond. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, that, those were all super helpful. I really, um, I think slow it down really resonated with me tonight, especially cause um, you know, it was a crazy day and I was getting ready for this event. So it's a good, it's always a good reminder. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I just wanted to say before we get into the Q and A uh, section, that um, somebody asked if, I just want to reiterate, this is being recorded and it will be shared out afterwards. So um, just give us a couple days to, you know, uh, get everything together and make sure we get all of your questions answered, but uh, look out for an email that'll be sent out to you. And uh, we'll also share it on um, all of our social channels for you guys to reference. It'll be on our blog. So don't worry if you, you have to go um, right now, you'll be able to catch the rest later. Okay, so I'm going to pull open the Q&A section and we'll start with um, a question in there. One second. Okay, first question is, do you have any thoughts on the intersection between sleep and stress? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, I highly recommend people to check out Ellen Bora's talk that I think is probably on the Calibrate website. Um, yeah. Sleep expert is fantastic. And yeah, I mean, sleep is such a core part that it's part of the, you know, the core aspect of Calibrate. Um, sleep is a great time for our, our bodies to recover. And so we need to get adequate amounts of sleep to manage our mental health. It's one of the first things I ask about when people come into therapy is like, how are they sleeping? Because sleeping is both a symptom and like an outcome. Um, so one thing that I think is really helpful um, in terms of what Dr. Bora talked about is creating more schedules for yourself to give yourself the opportunity to sleep more regularly, um, regular bedtimes, regular wake times. And that can be really hard during the holidays um, because there's so much stuff going on. So I would recommend in terms of managing your stress and utilizing good strategies is to really focus on your sleep and have good patterns. This can be really hard when you're visiting family you know, there's new places that you're sleeping, um, maybe in, uh, you know, sleeping on couches or sleeping in rooms with your children or whatever it is, but trying to figure out how to make things as easy as, as possible and create that space. Um, one thing that they talk about in the program and something I reiterate, reiterate to all of my patients is that, and this happens a lot during the holidays, is that alcohol is something that is really important for everybody to avoid in terms of sleep because it actually interrupts um, your sleep patterns. People think it's like a, a way for you to kind of relax or maybe it helps you fall asleep. And that's actually not really true. It is a depressant. So maybe it makes it easier to fall asleep, but it actually interrupts your sleep. So you end up having less restful sleep and then it kind of turns into a vicious cycle. So in terms of managing your stress and continuing, you know, have good supportive emotional health, I would recommend um, reducing or eliminating any alcohol during this time as well. Great. Thank you. Um, what about uh, like any meditation apps, any recommendations there of things that you, you really like and think could be helpful? 
Sure. Um, you know, there are great meditations on calm um, and Headspace is fantastic. I actually really love the kid meditations on Headspace. There's some good meta meditations, loving kindness meditations there. I find them a lot easier to access. We have very busy lives and that often results in many busy minds. Um, people have a really hard time slowing down. The like six senses mindfulness exercise can be really helpful, but there's also some grounding exercises that can be helpful if you don't have an app handy. Um, and one very popular one is five, four, three, two, one. So if you're in a situation where you're kind of feeling overwhelmed and you need to do a mindfulness exercise, looking around and naming in your head five things, hearing and listening for four things, um, trying to touch three things, uh, smell two things, and then taste one thing, so something in your mouth. Um, as well as, you know, if you're thinking about mindfulness, it doesn't always have to be meditation. A lot of mindfulness act activities can be active. So, Things I think are like really good mindfulness practices. You know, things traditionally like yoga. Yoga is great for mindfulness. Um, in part, the standing poses because if you're not mindful, if you are too in your head and not in your body, you're going to fall over. That's true also for like you know bicycling. Like if you're not paying attention, you're going to get hit by a car. Uh, if you're into surfing, if you're not paying attention. Like you're going to fall off your board. Um, you know, all of those kinds of things. If those are the type of activities. But even if you're going to like a driving range for golf, like I don't know if anybody unless you're really good at it, like you're not going to hit the ball. So there can be these really active, mindful exercises that don't involve you like sitting in a quiet room. They can be just you focusing on your body in a way that feels um, very restful, but also like active, which I think can be more accessible for a lot of people. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Thank you. Um, I feel like this one was probably going to be a popular question, um, but somebody asked, do you have any advice or resources for setting boundaries with family during the holidays? That is a hard one. I wish I had um, an easy one for that. And I think it depends on what it is. I mean, I think that because uh, boundaries can mean a lot of things. Um, people can ask too invasive of questions. People can you know, press you to do things you don't want to do. I think part of preparing for any holiday activity is probably trying to set yourself up for success and anticipating what's going to happen. Um, I think creating outs for yourself is always an important thing in any family event, even if you like your family. So that's, you know, having a job where you're the one who replenishes the ice or you're the one who volunteers to get something um, or, you know, you're in the middle of a conversation that you really don't like and oh, it turns out you have to go to the bathroom um, or something like that. It's totally fine for you to step out when you're feeling uncomfortable. And I think people forget that that's always an option and a choice is that you can always just be like, hey, you know, I need to get another you know, drink. Would you like anything? Or, oh, I need to help over there or whatever it is. And I think that that's in some ways you can see that as avoidance, but I think it's also just in, in situations where you see family like once a year and you're not gonna change Uncle Mike who is always gonna be talking about politics or whatever it is, it can be a good opportunity for you to have some sort of plan around that. Um, same thing with if you have somebody who's kind of your partner, whether it's your actual real partner or just like someone in your family or your friends who can kind of partner with you in an event where you're like, if I am, you know, pull my earlobe or do something else, like come get me, yeah. I'll say that I need it. And so I feel like those kinds of things can allow you to almost artificially like kind of get out of what you're doing so that you can uh, create opportunity for maybe something better. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like one of my go-tos is uh, taking out the trash because then I can step outside and get some fresh air, <laughs> which always yeah. makes me feel a little better, even if it's really cold, fresh air. <laughs> um, Great. And then what about um, like any tips, you know, for how to like maintain your emotional health, like the routines that you set in place, because your routine is going to be disruptive, uh, disruptive with all of the things coming up in the next couple of weeks. A lot of it is honestly planning. Like, I think that it's, uh, I, I joke, sometimes that um, one of the hardest things about being an adult is dinner. And it's surprising that it shows up every day. And it's always like, oh my God, it's dinner again. I have to plan and make this. But that's sort of what it is in terms of like also holidays. Like, you know, some stuff is coming up. Like you have, 
you know, parties or dinners out, or you have a bunch of things in one day, or you've got to go Christmas shopping or whatever it is, and just trying to make a plan. But also, well, that's where that third thing comes in, give yourself some grace. Like, you may not be able to work out every day or, you know, the place you want to or whatever it is. Um, and so adjust and plan for it. Like if you are a, you know, somebody who loves to go running outside and you are going somewhere where it is not going to be possible for you to run outside, figure out in advance, like what you're going to do, um, that might be reasonable. And maybe it is loosening up your requirements for yourself in terms of just creating movement. And that could be, you know, doing like an impromptu dance party with your nieces and nephews or whatever the case may be, but anticipating that things aren't going to be rigid, that you need to be flexible, um, and kind of creating a few options around that. Great. That totally makes sense. Um, I think we're at time. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining tonight. And thank you, Dr. Celio, for um, sharing your awesome tips. I hope you guys all take away something from tonight and we will share out the recording and any unanswered questions in the next couple of days. So keep an eye on your inbox and I hope you all have a safe, happy and healthy holiday season. Thanks guys, bye.